Hello, test. Hello, and welcome to Football Fanatics. I'm your host, Vincent, and today we're going over the Vikings at Cincinnati in week one. So the Vikings here in a 4-3 overlook with the linebackers shifted to the top side of the screen and the linemen shifted down, and this is going to present them with a much wider front. And this will help neutralize a lot of the Cincinnati's of jet sweeps and stuff like that. Now in this play, the guard will focus in on Tomlinson, the D lineman, and not get off of him fast enough to get to Nick Vigil, that blitzing linebacker. And because of that, Vigil will come clear through and get a sack. So see, the guards never really came off, and Tomlinson, or excuse me, Pierce there eventually helps clean up the back end. But that wrecked their drive, and now it is Minnesota's ball. Which brings me to the first play here by Minnesota, where Dalvin Cook will receive a play action, and he will go and pick up the free runner here. Where you see how he will cut around and receive that free runner. Now, with this pressure, he Cousins tries will try and slip out through the hole there, but won't be able to get through there. If he were to slide right there, he might have been able to find that seam in the pocket and get it out to Ham, but that's a tough decision, and it looked like he could get through that gap when he couldn't. Good play there by Hill to, to get that sack, but that will bring us into third and 20, where Cam Sample number will just overpower Bradbury, and Sample is not a nose tackle by trade, he's a DN, and this is one of the real weaknesses of the Viking game, is just that they don't have a ton of power on the offensive line, and they can get bull rushed at times. So, and that, you know, probably not going to pick up a tw third and 20 anyway, but here you have the second possession for Cincinnati, and we will have a blitz off the edge, here, and Breland will almost make a great play, but Woods will have to come knock it out. So you get that little slant, big catch, but Woods, the free agent pickup for Anthony Harris back there, able to knock it away. So here, we get oh, all the way, this is going to be a big run, and watch this containment here by Pratt on the edge, how he will jump inside right there. And because of that, Cook can now freely get to the edge and ends up making probably like a 3-yard gain into a 10-yard gain. And that's just the difficulty with stopping the run. As soon as one person misses, your entire play just blows from a 3-yard to a 10-yard, especially with the Vikings when you have such a good running back in Cook. So here, Cook will end up getting a screen on the left side, you know, find that hole. He gets the cut, finds a crease there. Just a good player making a play on third and six. So, third play here. Now, if you count how many guys are in the box, they're going to leave that guy on the bottom. And then there are five guys. The Vikings have five offensive linemen and C.J. Ham, So they actually get a double team, and then that safety will have to go and make this play. And a lot of this is Cleveland, the left guard, gets to go and pick up that linebacker that is deep in the backfield. And Cleveland, although he plays guard, was drafted as a tackle, so he has the athleticism to do that. So as we watch here, Cook gets it, get that double team and an easy first down. And that's just coming from straight up not having enough guys in the box. So here... It looks like they were going to be in that same look, but this time the safety cheats down. And this just helps out your entire team, because as that safety has to cheat down more and more, it puts a lot more pressure on the defense to not call those two high safety coverages. So here you get the play action, you get the bite, he's able to flip around and find Justin Jefferson on that big over route. Let's watch J Justin, J now he can focus on Justin Jefferson, gives a little nod to the outside and just sprints over the middle. Good feed there, 
nothing too be terrible in that coverage by Awuzie, but it's just a tough assignment when you have to cover someone running all the way across the field like that. So here we get a trick play on an end around, and KJ Osborne will end up getting it. Let's, but before we look at that, let's watch this block by Tyler Conklin as he will come across the formation and help seal off this edge. So you get that block, Jefferson sells the run, pulls up, throws it, finds Osborne on the sideline, gets a first down, and now for the rest of the season, even, even when you aren't playing the Bengals, they have to be aware that you can throw out of those end-around looks. So here on a third and 24, we will get a little out route here by K.J. Osborne, and Eli Apple will, will will be a little bit slow to switch from that outside receiver Jefferson into that inside receiver Osborne, and because of that, it will make him miss this tackle and g give him like a 26-yard gain on third and 24. So there's the pass, unable to make that switch and tackle, get the first down, 10 yards, now you got a fresh set, set of downs when you need to make a quarter of the field, they end up getting it because of that missed tackle. And that will bring up the seventh play of this drive, where you have just straight up power from that three-man rush. Knock him back, eventually get there. And again, if you notice, no one really does even any pass rush moves. They just go straight power on power and are able to overpower this offensive line that's a little bit smaller and more athletic. Now, if we go back, and let's watch Justin Jefferson here on that motion man. He breaks inside, tries to come out, gets pulled down. That's a holding penalty that they called, and that's why you don't get a third and forever here and you get a first and goal. And that was Eli Apple again on the hold, same guy that missed the tackle that w on the third and 24. Now here, the final play of the drive, Thielen will run through Eli Apple within five yards, so it's a legal hit. So see... Here, just straight through him, unable to keep his balance. And three rough plays kind of back-to-back -back there in the passing game. And that's one of the huge issues that Cincinnati's has, is just enough manpower on defense. Especially because they have uh, Mike Hughes that they acquired from the Vikings out with a hamstring injury. So you really want to see him back. So here... And whenever we get to it, we have the Blitzer Vigil is going to come left of center. And that center has to be locked in on the nose tackle Pierce. And that means that you have three on two and not enough bodies. That's Griffin playing three technique. And so they just don't have enough bodies over there. They have to let one guy through and they chose to let Griffin through. Griffin unable to make that play. You'd like to see him make it. But that's one of those things that Burrow did a, such a good job escaping, but you can't be allowing that to happen so often. It's okay if you ha let it happen once or twice in a season, but you've got to prevent that from happening more often. So here on the top, we have Chase, who's going to run an out route and just find that seam behind Woods, but or in front of Woods, but behind Patrick Peterson and get the first down. Nothing too much that you can say there. It was a third down. So here, Smith will get this, or Harrison Smith will get a blitz here, and Pirine unable to get the block off play action. So here, get the play action, unable to block him, and I, I can't, that's Griffin who finishes it off, but Smith really the main contributor to that sack, brings up second and very, very long, that they are running up the middle, and find that gap. Now let's take a Hey, look at this. You're able to just not have enough guys in the box because on second and 20 you think about a pass play. And Woods there comes and makes a big hit to bring up third and seven. Now here they're going to have our double A-gap blitz where they don't even sh shade it before the snap. Because if you look here, both of these linebackers, they're playing pretty tight, but they aren't up in that A-gap. They'll both end up coming. They have a good route on the bottom by Chase where he starts it on the outside. Let's get it to it. So he starts going outside, cuts it back in, gets the ball, and gets past the sticks. 
there. The ball was a little bit behind Jamar Chase and not on his numbers, but you can live with that. They go, go all the way down and get it to second and goal, where these linebackers and linemen are unable to track with that guy. Who is it? Uh, Higgins just finds that seam, gets the touchdown. And that will bring it back to Vikings possession here in a tie game. And here Conklin will end up getting this underneath pass, where he, he comes off the line, gets, gets an underneath pass, picks up some yards, forces the Bengals to use their final timeout, nothing ton there. Uh, on second down, the Vikings did end up accidentally going out of bounds, so that'll leave a bit more time. So here on the first play, Higgins will make a catch in the middle, behind or over Breland, Smith there. And you can say that's Breland's fault, but if you watch, he's playing deep and not allowing anything to the boundary, because the Vikings can give up a 10-yard play over the middle of the field there. So good coverage by Breland, just understanding what you can and can't take there by Higgins gets him a first down. So here, Al Alexander on the top, he, he will go find that big shot. And it will be actually Boyd who catches on that out route. Just perfect coverage, perfect throw, good throw beats good coverage. Nothing much you can say about that. Which brings us to fir first and ten from the 50. And here, Breland is now playing not as deep as he was before. And look at where Patrick Peterson is. I would almost think Breland should be back there. And then he allows, like on that first play, he, he didn't allow anyone to the outside. Here he does. And that's really his big mistake of the game. But he made plays in other parts, so it's hard to pin the loss on him. But it's one of those things you can't be making those mistakes with 40 seconds left and a half. You just can't. Like, if you gave up a field goal, it would have been fine-ish. But you can't be giving up a touchdown. So brings us to the second half where H huge or Higgins will get a out route he'll give this little inside nod but end up going to the out route get a big completion again on Breland but it's tough when you it's tough when you have a good route and no pass rush there not to say the Vikings don't have a pass rush they just couldn't get it it uh, done that play so here set or third and six, Smith starts at the line and is going to bail at the last second here. And I think that confused Joe Burrow into thinking he had cover three when he had cover two because he threw it right at Mackenzie Alexander, unable to get that interception, ends up bringing up a fourth and short that they'll QB sneak here on fourth down. But that's really a, a should-be turnover play that the Vikings were unable to capitalize on. So it's one of those things that, yeah, he would... Uh, Burrow ended up being 20 for 27, but you got to be better than that. So here, uh, fourth down, Chris Boyd on the bottom of your screen, and it will out to move Boyd for the Vikings. A little Boyd on Boyd crime there, and that will bring up goal to go. And this is where you get a good run on the inside. Harrison Smith is thinking more pass rush, because see, he does not jump on this run, because he's thinking Burrow's going to keep it. He doesn't, and that allows him to sneak through. One of those that you just had to guess, and he guessed wrong. Nothing you can actually do about that other than guess right. Like, it's a 50-50 chance, and you, you're going to be wrong more than 50% of the time, because sometimes they'll will be prepared for it. So here, Ogan Joby, which is that guy right there, will end up crashing inside on this run, and Cook will see that and bounce right through his get lane responsibility. Another time that you see one guy m make a slight misstep, and it, all of a sudden it costs you a first down in the run game. You just have to have like, it's hard to play good run defense, because as soon as one guy makes a mistake, especially with a good runner like uh, Cook, you give up a first down. And now here, one of the coolest plays is Thielen will go and make a block on this linebacker, pushing him in. 
and Cleveland will make a block in the lineman pushing him out to create a seam for Cook to run through here. So see, there's the in and out block. Cook unable to stay on his feet past the safety, but you get a good play out of it. Get like eight yards. And here, Abdullah will have a nice little in route, bounce it off the linebacker, kick it back out, get a first down, keep the drive alive, especially when you're down 14 points. You've got to be able to keep drives alive like that. And that will bring us to this third and 26, in which K.J. Osborne will have this slant here that he picks up for like 10, 15 yards, takes a big hit, but hangs on. Really good game by him overall. Nothing too much. Now, you get here on the second possession, Pierce will pull over Hopkins just with pure strength and go get a sack here. Watch it. Just rips him to the side. Just pure speed by a nose tackle. Look at how fast that man runs. Like, he covered 10 yards there in about a second and a half. And when you're over 300 pounds, that's just terrifying for a quarterback to see that running down on you. So here, you're going to get a slant on th third and long that bre beats Breland. You're, you will get the tackle right at the first down marker. It will end up being fourth down and short. And this is where Breland really excels, is these fourth and short. Because you see, he's behind this line of scrimmage. He's going to go find that little seam and make contact shoulder to thigh there on, on the replay if you watch the game. And end up making a first down, despite Breland holding up a fourth down finger. It is a first down for the Vikes. But it's one of those things, Breland is such more of a, uh, a linebacker who has the speed to play corner than a corner who's playing corner. He's more of like Ant... Ant Anthony Winfield, if you remember, if you're a longtime Vikings fan. I don't really fully understand why they have him playing outside corner and not nickel corner, because it feels like he should be a nickel corner, but beside the point. So here, for our third down, Jefferson just missed on this p pass here, would have picked up the first, fourth and four. Thielen here in motion will end up beating Hilton, the, the corner, on a slant and end up taking it to the house on a blitz you didn't have protection behind it one of those it's just a tough play especially when Hilton's not your best corner as a Cincinnati so here Pierine will find a, a small gap get on an inside run get a first down nothing too big there like big play but nothing super thing and here Breland will decide to hold up into pass coverage because he has to choose whether he's going to follow the tight end or assume it's a run and stay outside. He thinks it's a, a pass, guesses wrong, can't get back to the outside, gives up a first. Another instance of just guessing pass and guessing wrong for the Vikes. Nothing you can do. Here, Mackenzie Alexander, big play here. He squeezes down past this picker, ends up making a play on it. And that is just kind of the story of the rest of the game. As all of you watching this, I assume you know the outcome. You know, just more plays. Nothing too terrible much. Pierce will end up getting another sack on Hopkins at the beginning of overtime. Vikings do end up tying the game. Thielen gets a couple more catches. But it's one of those that, y you, if you're looking at it, couple key takeaways. The, we need to fix the replay system. Because when the Vikings lost that ball in overtime, from my eyes, it was like 60% not a fumble. Which takes us to the question of how did it get called a fumble? And the referees are told on the field, if it's close, call it a fumble, we'll, we'll overturn it on replay. However, then they go to replay, and they have to find evidence to overturn the, the call that we're, they were supposed to make by default. So, the two fixes that you could have here, the one that I propose is just say, hey, refs, if it's close, call what you think is right, and if you're wrong, we'll go to replay and fix it on replay as best as we can, and that's just unfortunate, but it was a bang-bang play, and you can't really control that. 
The second way to fix it is to ha change the replay into instead of overturning these calls that they're supposed to just automatically have as turnovers, say, ignore the call on the field and just go with what you see on replay. Because then you won't have... And I, I bring up this case because it's the most recent, but there are many other cases of these very, very close, little bit more down than, a, than fumble, but because they the refs on the field were told to rule it a fumble and they couldn't find enough evidence to say he was down, even though it felt like he's down, and it kind of looks like he's down more than it's fumble, it ends up getting called fumble every time. And the takeaways for the Vikings are that, like, Breland probably, I think, would be should be moved into the slot just with his instincts in the run game, and that will also help protect him at slot cornerback, not having to go up against Jamar Chase as often. And the Vikings' offensive line, they need to have some more power there, whether that be Mason Cole, Wyatt Davis, or even Darisaw coming back soon. He practiced Wednesday, but couldn't get into the game, wasn't clear with that groin injury. And speaking of injuries, Barr back soon, also practiced Wednesday, it's gonna be out, was out though. And two other things... K.J. Osborne looked really good. The Vikings look like they have a third receiver, and Nick Vigil looks great as, an, as a linebacker if Barr doesn't get back. And for the Bengals, Burrow looked great, 20 of 27, two touchdowns, no interceptions, but he did have that one play that probably should have been intercepted. And he did take a couple of sacks that it looked like he could have gotten out of. Mixon in the run game looks fine, has good vision as well as P. Ryan, able to find those holes in the run game. But, on the bad side, it seems like 10% like of the snaps, the Bengals just forget to block on offense. And it's one of those that it leads to gifted sacks. So, that's all I have for you right now. Thanks for watching, and good.